Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in today's video I've been out here gathering some fat wood. So if you're interested in seeing how I got to this point, do me a favor, take a look back at one of my prior videos for the details. But at this point moving forward, I am going to take a look at a couple of beautiful products that are gonna help me use this fat wood and really get it lit on fire. Now in another one of my prior videos, one of the most polarizing that I have is on this six inch by one half inch bayite ferro rod. Now the reason why it's so polarizing, well a couple things. One is I was simply doing a demonstration of this versus some other options and people didn't really like that. They were complaining about my technique, they were complaining about um, you know this fire rod and how I wasted my money and how there's so many better options out there and I threw my money away. But more than any other comment, what I continually hear about is the quality of the fire rods from Nathan4071. Now if you're not familiar with Nathan4071, he does have a YouTube channel and he also sells his products off eBay. Now I do have a number of things to cover, but before we get into it, do me a favor, stay tuned. So Nathan4071, again producing this fire rod and also striker. Now this striker had a very sharp tip, so you'll see I just put a little end cap on it to protect my pockets and things from this stabbing through them. But as you look here, just these nice wood handles on here, well epoxied to both the striker and also the ferro rod, but these are not quite a matching set. Well, that brings me to just a little bit of a story. So as I mentioned, with the number of people saying that I should get my hands on one of these Nathan 4071 ferro rods, they're the best composite, they're the best material, they strike the best, you can't go wrong, you wasted your money on the Bayite ferro rod. Well, with that, I reached out to Nathan4071 to ask him for his advice. In that email, I said, look, I'm looking to purchase a matching set of a striker and a ferro rod. Do you have any suggestions? Would you be willing to make one for me? Where can I get my hands on one? I was really hoping to do a great review and put this whole thing together, but my response from Nathan was a little underwhelming. He says the following, thank you for your interest in my ferro rods. The fact is that most ferro rods are alike. It's your technique on striking the ferro rod and preparation of your tinder that will give the best results. Now I had mentioned that I was a YouTube host and he says the following, Crazy Russian Hacker featured a video with my one inch diameter ferro rod. The video has 2.3 million views. I pretty backed up with making handles. As far as you asking me to make a top notch handle, I'm barely learning the wood lathe. Sorry, I don't do social media. Well, no response on how to find his products, no response on whether or not he'd be uh, interested in trying to help me get a matching set. So naturally by the end of it, I bought what I could off eBay. These do not match. I'm not thrilled about that. I wish he could have been a little more helpful, but if you really listen to what he says, well, what you're really telling me is that when it's all said and done, this ferro rod is no different from this ferro rod. Now, according to all of you who've been giving me a really hard time over the past few years over me wasting my money on this, I can tell you I have struck this time and time and time again. I've started fire after fire after fire pretty much with ease. I haven't had too much of a difficult time. So now moving forward, is this going to do any better? Is this going to provide a better quality spark? Well, there's only one way to tell. And for me to keep this in a controlled situation, we are only going to use the Nathan 4071 striker. Now this will be a good test to see how this striker performs. We're gonna use both of these to get some fat wood started. But the first thing I need to do is process down that fat wood and get it ready to take a spark. Okay, so first in order for me to get prepared, 
the first thing I'm going to do is get my fat wood in, I would say, shape and order to actually process it down. Now, the pieces that I found while I was out here working are fairly small. However, they should be good enough for this test. Now, what I'm going to do is get myself a good, clean edge here of the actual fat wood that I can scrape and get some fluff. And I'm going to use this uh, wildlife hatchet here just to get down to the meat of it. Then I think what I'm probably going to do is use that Nathan 4071 scraper. Use that to actually get me the fluff. All right, so I don't want to lose too much meat. I need a handle here. So just being careful. I get that edge. I can get some nice fluff right there. Fluff this down. Now, it is kind of moist on this log, which if I'm careful and I pick a dry spot won't be a problem, but it's good because it's wet out here and the last thing I want to do is start a fire that I can't put out. So, I mean, everything's kind of damp. It's been raining for the past little while, but this should be a good test. So, I'm going to take a couple other pieces. I need two tests, one for each one of the fire rods. So, I mean, I can't really do this. Um, and only process once. So I need to be a little bit careful. I don't have a ton of material. So I'm going to process uh, really two different setups, one for each ferro rod, and we'll go from there. So for this very first setup, all I'm going to do is take this scraper and start to work on this fat wood and just get myself some real nice little fluff. And you can see here that it is working very nicely with this scraper. So all I had today was this scraper and my axe. So because the axe is gonna be a little bit difficult to process uh, this real super fine stuff, this is gonna be real nice for my ability just to get some good fluff here, make a nice little pile, and then we'll try to get this lit. First with the Bayite ferro rod. Okay, so here you see my little fluff. Here's my waste of money, Bayite ferro rod, and then that Nathan 4071 scraper. I'm just gonna do a couple preliminary scrapes here. Wow, that really showers. And now the ferro rod. Oop. There you go. So when I actually got a direct hit on there, I mean, really, you can blame technique. Um, you know, the first couple of strikes, as I showered the sparks down, and you can see the magnesium in there, look at it. That magnesium coming off of this ferro rod. But um, again, my point being, those first couple of strikes weren't really right on point. That's my fault, that's not the fire steel. That's technique. Now, I can tell you, this scraper worked amazing. Um, it's good square edges. Worked very well, has a nice handle, feels really good in the hand. Um, but again, going back to the quality of the fire steel, this ferro rod definitely worked. And you could see, it didn't take a ton of effort. I pressed down fairly easy, and it showered a nice spark right onto that bundle. Okay, and so now, we're going to do the same exact test a second time. I just need to fluff out the same exact piece of fat wood here. And then we'll spark the Nathan 4071 ferro rod. Okay. So now just piling up this fluff. I should have about the same size pile. It's the exact same piece of fat wood. So should be about the same controlled setup. Now here, getting the Nathan 4071 ferro rod, what I'm going to do is a couple cleaning passes. Nice spark. Okay. Getting this down. Bang. 
definitely went. Fairly similar result. Nice little burn there. Now I don't see the little secondary sparks of magnesium. It's not to say it isn't in there. Um, it very well might be. But I would say a very similar result. Oh, there you go. Little fizzle there. So, either way, now I can tell you this handle feels very nice. It's comfortable, has a good feel in the hand, gives you a good grip and purchase on that ferro rod. Nice capability to get all the way to the back. You can see I had a full long run at that. Um, that's a good three and a half inches showing there. Uh, so there you go, boom, just nice and even and easy, no problem. Now, one of the things that I think is funny is there are tiny little ridges. Well, everybody said to me, oh, that's because, you know, you had ridges in your Bayite ferro rod because it's a piece of crap. Oh, you wasted your money. You should get a better ferro rod. It's too hard. Well, bottom line is the composition might be slightly different. How do I really know? But at the end of the day, both of these with little ridges. And the other thing that people said is, Oh, your scraper's no good. You need to get a better scraper. You need a Nathan 4071 scraper. Well, that might be the case, but bottom line is, no matter what you do, you might end up with little ridges. It's just the nature of the beast. I mean, you can see up top where I was applying a little more pressure, there's less ridges, and then down the bottom when I was lightening up a bit, because I was getting close to my bundle, right? So I don't want to go smashing down into my bundle. So when I was lightening up on that, that's where you get a little chatter. That's where the scraper kind of bounces over the top just a little bit as I'm lightening up. And that's just fact of the matter, the way it's going to be. So in my opinion, I really don't see too much of a difference between these two ferro rods. There is a dramatic difference in price. Now here, obviously, obviously, I am getting a good, complete, finished, handmade product. I'm getting some nice machining. I'm getting that lathe work, beautiful handles, quality craftsmanship. This, this handle, this handle is gorgeous. I mean, look at that thing. That is absolutely beautiful. I would have loved more than anything to have that same handle on this. I really wanted that matching pair. I mean, this looks good, and I'm hoping over time this will kind of weather a little bit and give me a similar look to that. But look at that. I mean, that brown in there, and then this aged look on the handle. This is absolutely gorgeous. There's no getting around it. It's a beautiful piece. I mean, you do get what you pay for in terms of the quality craftsmanship. I'll give you that. But you can't argue the fact that both of these ferro rods, in reality, for their actual function of throwing a spark did a fairly similar job. And so now before we wrap this up, I do want to do one last demonstration. So as you look here, you can see that this stock here having the quarter inch by two and a half inch markings on it, okay? So that's going to stay up. So that means I'm using the exact same edge on this scraper as I work here. So what I'm going to do is five little cleaning passes, so to speak, and now one, okay, so that's the quality of the spark that you get off of that. So let's do the exact same thing here. It's hard to say, I really can't say I see any substantial difference. I mean, this is still showering pretty good. I mean, I have to say it's fairly equal. I, honestly, I really can't tell. Let's try a quick side-by-side. -side.
So, all right, guys, there you have it. A quick side-by-side, -side, the Nathan 4071 ferro rod and not matching striker and the Bayite half inch by six inch ferro rod. You tell me, I mean, I'm just out here trying an experiment. I'm out here showing you these two side-by-side. -side. Which do you think performed better? Now, I'm talking performance. If you're talking aesthetics, there's no doubt. But value, what if you're somebody looking to get into this hobby? Are you gonna go wrong with the Bayite? Well, that's where I was at the time. I was getting started. I was looking for a substantial ferro rod that would last me a long time. And guess what? It did the job. It lasted time and time and time again. Well, at this point, I've now upgraded. I've got a little more classy piece. The other thing is, bottom line, this takes up a good amount of space in terms of diameter. Maybe it doesn't fit directly on your knife sheath. Well, guess what? This does. It's tight and tidy, and it hasn't been a problem for me. So everything has a pro and a con. You know, you get a little fit and finish here, but you do also get some bulk. Maybe you just need the back of your knife spine to get your ferro rod lit. You don't necessarily need a dedicated striker. Well, here, now I have a couple of options. But again, just weigh in in the comments, let me know what you think. And finally, I'm a little disappointed at Nathan's response to me. I just wish it was a little more personable and he got me pointed in the right direction. If I just had that beautiful matching piece, well, my video review would have probably come out a little bit different then, wouldn't it have? I mean, I think showing you guys a good quality matching set of the ferro rod with the striker, I know I would have felt better about it, but hey, you know, that's sometimes the way things go. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.